Welcome to Perio Post, the video show that keeps you abreast with the ongoings in the field of periodontics. Today's topic is furcation involvement, the current diagnostic measures. We know that furcation involvement is the invasion of bifurcation and trifurcation of multi rooted teeth by periodontal disease. Diagnosis of furcation involvement on any day could be a challenge for a periodontist or a dentist. It's very, very difficult sometimes to pick up these particular defects. However, with the right, right modality, we can actually detect furcation involvement quite well. Now, before I go ahead, there, we are, I'm going to talk about some traditional diagnostic measures, and that includes probing and radiographs, and then some current ones such as cone beam CD scans. Let's start with probing. We all know that to, in order to actually look into furcation zone and in order to detect furcation involvement, we need to use a curved instrument. Neighbors probe or a graded explorer might actually be a very, very good tool to help detect the problem. In case of upper teeth, that means maxillary molars, the mesofurcation is actually located more palatally than to the buccal tooth surface, so it should therefore be probed from the palatal aspect. Proximal furcations are more difficult for probing, particularly when the contact points are very broad in between the adjacent teeth. So we know that buccal and lingual furcation are easily probed in the lower molars. That's not such a big problem. So we need to take care while we are probing the mesial or the distal furcation area of maxillary molars. Other than probing, radiographs are our usual method of detecting furcation involvement. We have intraoral peripical x-rays, we have OPGs, we have bite rings, and they're actually quite good in picking up the furcation area in the mandibular molars. However, the current diagnostic methods lack consistency and have many limitations. And this is mainly due to limited access to the depth of vocation, morphologic variations, and measurement errors. So till today, re-entry or surgical diagnosis is the most foolproof method to actually detect vocation involvement. So with the advent of cone beam CT, things have changed. We now have a three-dimensional analysis and diagnosis of furcation involvement, which is possible. The main advantage of cone beam CT as compared to the traditional CT scan is its high accuracy, high resolution, and low cost. In 2010, Walter and co-workers reported that CBCT, an intrasurgical evaluation of maxillary molar furcation involvement, was found to be in substantial agreement. And that CBCT enables a precise estimation and categorization of vocation involvement, as well as visualization of the root morphologies with root proximities or root fusions. So here is a very, very good way of looking at vocation involvement. Another study in 2016 found out that cone beam CT gives a very accurate diagnosis of vocation defects especially in advanced periodontal cases. So how does CBCT fare as compared to traditional intraoral peripical x-ray? Well, we understand that intraoral peripical x-ray gives only a two-dimensional information of a three-dimensional structure. So here is a case where in case of the lower six, we don't really see much changes in furcation area. Yes, we can see that there is a little bit of a change maybe in the trabecular pattern in between the roots, mesial and distal roots of the six, but still it's not very clear. And this is a CBCT of the same case where we can actually see that CBCT scan has picked up a furcation involvement in between the roots of the six. So there is a very substantial defect between the mesial and the distal root. And the good thing about CBCT is that because we have axial slices, sagittal slices and coronal slices, the chance that we are going to miss location defect is actually very, very little. In 2010, another study looked at CBCT to examine the geometric relationship between the roots and furcation areas of the mandibular first molars. 
and it verified that the X-ray beam projection angle affects the accuracy and diagnosis of a vacation defect. So changes in the horizontal angulation cause geometric distortion in intraoral radiography, and that's why sometimes it cannot be picked up in the traditional radiographic measures. So it's recommended that if you're taking traditional intraoral radiographs, we should take them at different X-ray angle beams to reduce the risk of missing vocation involvement. So we have looked at how CBCD fares against traditional radiographs, traditional dental radiographs. Now let's look at how CBCT fares against periodontal probing, which is one of the standard ways of detecting vocation involvement. So in 2015, a study looked at CBCT versus periodontal probing, and they found that the, that the number of vocation involvement teeth detected by means of CBCT was larger than by means of periodontal probing. The largest increment, up to 73.7%, was found in the distopalatal maxillary sites between CBCT and clinical probing. And the smallest increment, surprisingly, was found in the buccal sites of mandibular molars, in which 63.3% of vocation involvement was detected using only CBCT, but not clinically. So this study actually validates the use of CBCT as one of the biggest um, ways of detecting vocation involvement. So what's the take home message today? Do we need CBCT in every case to detect vocation involvement? Well, the simple answer is no. Diagnosis of teeth with vocation involvement is not straightforward. Combination of history, clinical and radiographic examination is required to come to any conclusion of vocation involvement. And CBCT in recent years has emerged as a strong adjunctive diagnostic tool to detect vocation involvement. I hope you have enjoyed today's session. Um, make sure that if you have any queries regarding what I've talked today, please email us on www.periopost.com and I'll be seeing you with another edition of Periopost next month. Till then, keep smiling.